first to tell you that I'm one of those people that is in the mindset and mentality of once I find something I'm comfortable with in a video game, I don't really often stray too far from that path. I don't often go and look to see what else could drastically change my play style just because it's not something that I'm necessarily comfortable with. And within Call of Duty in particular and World War II, if we're pinpointing it more precise, that is something in which the basic trainings, the weaponry, I feel comfortable with stuff. And if I'm not going for challenges, chances are I'll just play casually with those things that I'm already accustomed to. That's something that you guys may very well fall into as well, but it's not something that is in any way, shape or form wrong. So if you do, it's totally cool. But I'm one of those people that taking a step back, actively thinking about it, there are a lot of different options that we can have in World War II in particular. And so one thing that I was evaluating about myself was the play style and the basic trainings that I end up using, because I was thinking about it a lot in pretty much every single Call of Duty previously, I would always have these some sort of scavenger perk on, whether it was renamed for the game or if it was actually scavenger, that sort of replenish ammo via the perk is something that I would always use. But in World War II, I don't use it at all. So it got me to thinking what else could be out there that I can take a look at and try around a little bit to see if there's anything that on the surface it offers some cool things, but the secondary things you might not necessarily look at are just as good as well. So with that said, I wanna take a look at four basic trainings in World War II that do more than you may know just by looking at it on the surface and some things that the secondary bonuses of these basic trainings are actually just as valuable as the first, if not sometimes more so. So a little bit of a fair warning, it's not gonna be something where I'm uncovering some deep dark secrets that are never listed or anything like that in the basic training selection, but instead it's just stuff that you might not actively think about. You might say, always stick to primed, to hustle, to espionage, and you might not really think about these other ones in some of the extra perks they offer. So that said, let's jump right into the first of our four, that being the basic training called Lookout. Now, this is one that Honestly, I didn't really ever think too much of, but whenever I started to use it, I really enjoyed it. Now, the primary thing that it does is it allows enemy targets to appear from farther away. That's obviously nice that you can end up getting that extra jump on it, but unless you play those long sight lines, which truth be told, there's not all that many that unless you're sitting stationary, there's not all that many long lines of sight that you can run and gun through that it really helps you out but the extra added secondary perk that this basic training offers is that it allows for a larger mini-map on your HUD. So woohoo, that's all cool, fine and dandy. We get to see a little more of the mini-map, but that actually comes in handy a lot more than you may end up thinking about. If you guys remember back before E3, we had absolutely no idea what any of the multiplayer gameplay experience would look like in World War II. So when E3 rolled around, we had our first early versions of the game showcased to us, in which I still think it's really cool how awesome some of the differences were from then that you probably would never pick up on. But when we got our first introduction to the mini-map, a lot of people weren't really too fond of how it was circular, how it was really zoomed in on a very small specific location. And it was something that really didn't offer a lot of full scale coverage of something that you can see maybe say 10 more feet in front of you. But with that said, this now brings the mini map back to probably about a 75% increase on the area covered or somewhere similar to that. That's just a rough estimation, but nonetheless, it still offers an incredible increase in the amounts of area that the mini map will showcase. So if somebody is sweeping with a UA if somebody's taking fire without a suppressor, you'll be able to find those enemies a lot closer and have a better indication where they will be at exactly on the map instead of just their dot is on that outer perimeter. Now, of course, it's never going to showcase the entirety of the map, you have a much greater area in which you can see just at first glance, which is incredibly helpful and something that personally, until I started playing around with this, I never really thought that it could make that much of a difference. Now, the next one that I want to talk about deals a little bit with some stealth play. And no, I'm not talking about those people that I keep consistently running into sitting in a corner with the FG42 and Mountain Division because those just aren't the people you want to be. But if you're ending up running and gunning around trying to be as silent, a little bit of a ninja, if you will, bobbing and weaving throughout the spawns or trying to flank enemies and all, one thing that will definitely help you is the undercover basic training. Now, personally, I'd rock this with maybe, say, the Airborne Division so you have a suppressor. Granted, your footsteps will still be there, but with Mountain Division, then you give away your shots on a grander scale whenever you take shots without a suppressor. But regardless, getting back to the undercover basic training, the primary perk that this offers is that it offers no name or reticle color change when the enemies see you. So essentially, you kind of just blend in with the crowd, if you will. That's something which is, of course, a nice little added bonus, but the secondary bonus to this is one that I think is even better. It hides enemy death locations of all the enemies that you end up killing. 
So whereas it's something that might not be the thing that is paid attention to the most, if you end up having a silencer and you have this on, you can end up getting behind an entire enemy team, take some players out and in their peripheral vision, whereas they might see that skull icon that pops up where a teammate died, giving away your position essentially or your rough location, it doesn't do that at all. So you can stealth on up and take out enemies left, right and center if you play this right. Of course, that's something that is very specific to a certain play style, but it definitely does do wonder whenever you think about the fact that that's not the front of the basic training and the abilities that it wants to show off. That's something that is just secondary and of course helps out, I think maybe even better than the primary of no name or reticle color change when the enemies see you. So if you're a stealth player and you don't try this out, maybe give it a shot. But that said, that's gonna move us over into the one that I talked a little bit about earlier whenever we prefaced this video, that being a scavenger-like perk. And in World War II, that is the basic training forage. So the first thing that is incredibly helpful with this is one that, of course, I will definitely say is a very nice bonus, that being forage's primary ability to resupply bullets from killed enemies. Now, if it's something in which you play, say, infantry division, that's not something that you really have to worry about because a lot of the times they give you the max ammo if you have have that ranked up and because of how World War II plays a lot of the times you won't necessarily expend all of that ammunition and you can rock your class setup without it. Now maybe I'm completely wrong maybe you are one of those people that stays alive every single life dropping V2s and you need that ammo. Forge's primary ability is something incredibly helpful no doubt but the secondary perk that it offers is that it allows you to swap weapons faster which is something that is incredibly useful as a secondary perk if you're already going to rock this because if you take a look at the side by sides here. You can tell the time for swapping is slower compared to when you don't have the basic training equipped, but as for which weapons are affected the most, that of course comes up to whichever weapon classification it is. The smaller are going to be quicker as is and are going to benefit a little bit less than say a larger weapon. So in this comparison a pistol versus that of an SMG. So the spread will depend on once again, which weapon classification, but it does help out greatly just as a secondary bonus, which of course is something that if you're using forge, probably the chances are you're going for that ammo, not necessarily the quick swaps, but it does help out in those pin situations in which it really can be a lifesaver at points. Now the final one that I've found really useful, but of course it really comes down to just the experience that other players have with the game as well as you, it comes down to flanker. Now flanker is one that of course you might use to counter that of having to use mountain division, so maybe you can get that suppressor with airborne division, but you still want to stay off the radar, so you might use flanker for its primary ability of being hidden from recon aircraft while moving quickly. So how ghost was tailored in some previous games where you had to be actively moving, you couldn't sit in a corner, which is unfortunate how mountain division works. You can sit in a corner and be completely hidden from radar, but nonetheless, it ends up giving you that primary ability of being hidden a little bit of more of a stealthy class. Once again, one thing that is, I think an inadvertent advantage here that I have just recently come into contact with so many of these is that it delays the experience explosives of enemy mines. So if you end up coming across somebody that's sitting in a corner or so, or drops an S mine or tosses an S mine right before they die, you have a little bit of an extra window of time to either jump and dodge that or completely clear the area just by running past it. Again, like I mentioned, this one's a little bit more situational and depends on the players that you end up going up against. But if you are using flanker, that is a nice little advantage that you might not consciously think about once again. Something that does have that extra bonus that really could help in a pinch situation. But of course, that I think is where we're gonna round out this list of my top four perks that I think have some extra bonus advantages to using them. Whereas, once again, going outside of my comfort zone a little bit more, they offer quite a bit of an advantage compared to just that base that it's primarily known for. So of course, once again, Lookout, Undercover, Forge, Flanker. If you guys have not tried any of these, maybe give them a shot because they do have extra subsidiary perks that allow for a little bit more than just that one primary advantage. So I think it's very cool, a lot of fun to look at, and once again, try and maybe challenge yourself to go outside of that comfort zone. And with that said, let me get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. Are there any that you guys would throw in on this list as being awesome to have that secondary perk that you don't actively think about? Is there anything that you try out of this list? Whatever it may be, feel free to let me know down there in the comment section down below. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, we're on that road to 100,000 subscribers, so, so close. And of course, if you guys want to stay up to date with anything regarding Call of Duty World,
World War II. Best class setups, tips, tricks, news, information, showcases, things like this of top secrets if you want to put it that way. If any of that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube, but practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. But all that said and out of the way, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.